Right, time now for our update from the CWI Regional 4-Day Championship. Let's start our Day 3 Round 3 recap at the College Cricket Ground, where defending champions Guyana Harpy Eagles are closing in on victory. And uh, this against the West Indies Academy side, led by a fabulous century of 165 from Kevin Sinclair. The Harpy Eagles getting to 417 for seven declared in their second innings and setting the West Indies Academy 429 for victory. The West Indies Academy 161 for seven at Stumps. They are 268 runs away from what would now be an unlikely win. Jordan Johnson, the top scorer so far for the West Indies Academy with 54 against Isaiah Thorne, who has taken 3-4-32. Let's move across to Warner Park. We're resuming on their overnight. 48 without loss, the TNT Red Force, led by Jed Goon, is 64. Closed day three on 285 for six. They lead by just 104 against the Hurricanes. Rakeem Cornwall is so far the pick of the bowlers with 3 4 56 for the Hurricanes. Scores in that match TNT Red Force 137 and 285 for six. The Leeward Islands Hurricanes 318. Over at Sabina Park, Barbados Pride ended their first innings 389 all out. Captain Craig Brathway to resume at 129 was eventually dismissed for 142. Face 314 deliveries for that. Derville Green, the pick of the Scorpions bowlers with 4 4 78. And the Scorpions in their second innings um, getting up to 220. For eight, that's a lead of just 100 runs. Amjay Mansing is so far the top scorer with 54. Leroy Long supported with 43. Shaquille Cumberbatch, the 29-year-old, and they say he is a former groundsman at Kensington Oval, taking four for 22, the leading wicket taker so far for the Pride. Scores again, Jamaica Scorpions 269 and 220 for 8, Barbados Pride 389. All right, let's go over to our feature venue, Chedwin Park, where Winnard Island's Volcanoes are taking on the combined campuses and colleges. Our reporter, Gerard Morisili, is live on location. Gerard. Thank you so much, Ricardo. I am here at Chedwin Park, as you mentioned. Uh, come my campuses and colleges. At the end of day three, a pretty good day with the bat for them. They lead by 79 runs, and uh, the scores in the match so far come by campuses and colleges in their first innings 204 all out, 270 for six. At the close of play, they lead by 79 again. Uh, Windward Islands Volcanoes in their only time at back, 395. They resumed day three on 358 for eight. Kevin Hodge was at the crease with 130. Uh, he ended not out on 153. Uh, his first 150 score in first class cricket. First class cricket. And yeah, that ended right their innings. Uh, Jonathan Carter, though, he was a standout on day three with the bat for CCC. He was very close to his eighth, first, to his seventh first class century, but he fell short when he was adjudged LBW by both by Sunil. Ambrisk, uh, the umpire, Chris Taylor, of course, a name that is familiar to us and the person is familiar as well. But Carter was a part of two very good, good uh, partnerships. 90 runs when the score was 31 for three at lunch. He joined uh, Damel Evelyn, the opener, who got his first, his maiden half century in first class cricket, scoring 56. He was dismissed earlier, though. Uh, 31 for three, it was at lunch. He joined with Evelyn for 90 before they were lost a couple of wickets after Evelyn's dismissal. And uh, then the man uh, who took five wickets in the first innings, that was Romario Graves. He added 61. They combined for 122 run partnership before Carter was dismissed for that 94 score. And yeah, at T, they were 138 for five. It looked as if they were going to be bowled out before reaching the target of 191. That, that was what they were they were chasing uh, to get back the lead and set a target to make the Windward Islands Volcanoes team bat again. They achieved it right after 
the tea break. It was some lovely batting but from both Carter and Graves. Nothing flamboyant, just very efficient, very patient. They occupied the crease, both of them, and uh, it re reaped rewards for them both. Uh, they both got past the half century mark. Carter falling just six runs short of a century. A judged LBW, like I said earlier, but yeah, there, it was questionable because he did get a, a bit of bat on it. Uh, I think so. He said that he got some bat on it after I spoke with him as well. Of course, every batsman believes that he's not out. Uh, I would know because I used to bat. But yeah, that's the position here of the game so far. Uh, I did get a chance to speak with both batsmen, with, with Romayo Graves, who batted uh, at the end of the innings, he ended with Sian Haki, who briskly got up to 18 not out, and they will resume their innings in the morning on day four uh, as they look to build on that lead. And uh, yeah, Carter is out. He's not there at the crease anymore. But yeah, they still have the man, Romayo Graves, not out on 61. He was really good with the bat. And I also spoke with Shamar Springer, who was really the best bowler so far, with two for 33 uh, from his bowling spell. He didn't bowl express pace, but he was very patient very uh different he, he mixed up his bone and bowled a lot of bouncers and uh, yeah ryan john gillen tyson at the first in the first session they took control of the game for the windward islands volcanoes with the bowling but then from all there was about the spinners and shamar springer coming together trying to get those wickets they had a really tough day in the field just as ccc did uh, on day two, which really proves that it is a batting-friendly pitch here, batting-friendly conditions. But the difference is with the Windward Islands Volcanoes, they were more chirpy in the field. They were more intense in the field at all points of the day. They did leak a few runs, but it wasn't costly as it was for CCC on day two. Well, let's hear now from both Romayo Graves. Uh, but before him, we hear from Shamar Springer of Windward Island Volcanoes. I think the day went pretty well, um, given the condition of the pitch, it's very bad and friendly, so I think that he showed some good foot today, and we just have to finish, finish off the job tomorrow. Yeah, you had two wickets in the innings so far, uh, pretty aggressive bowling from your part as well. Uh, just talk to me about what you really wanted to achieve with your spell. Um, when I first started, I just wanted to be um, <clears throat> as straight as I possibly could. Um, but at the same time, I wanted to keep the batsman guessing, so I tried to bowl a few short balls so it wouldn't become too predictable. Yeah, that was my plan. Yeah, so you're pretty much um, game open right now. Uh, anyone could take it, a slight lead for CCC, but uh, can you win this one from here? Yeah, I think, as I said before, um, the wicket is a, a batter-friendly one, so once we could you know, bowl them out um, cheaply tomorrow morning, we will be in for a good, a good show for the victory. I think uh, yeah, another good performance with John Carter. You know, he brings a lot of the experience um, to the team, a young team. Uh, well, my job is just to support him. The wicket is really good for batting. And, you know, at home, I'm, he plays about so he opening batting, sometimes the 50 or cricket and what's not. So he's no strange, strange feat to me. So I just put on my head, did what the team requires, and, you know, it's working so far. Yeah, a lead of just over 70 runs now. Um, of course, you want to maintain the, that lead and, of course, build on it in the morning. Um, what's it going to take for you to first reach 100 and a pile on the runs? Uh, just more the same, you know. I'm at the crease with Sion. He's a really good batsman as well. Um, a couple guys that are handy with the bat to come as well. Matara, you know, Edmund. So um, I feel pretty confident we could get a solid lead and if we feel the need to, push for the win. Yeah, what is it batting um, against this Windward Islands Volcanoes bowling attack and the fielders as well who are very chirpy? Uh, how do you keep yourself focused? Um, yeah, they're really good at that. You know, you've got a lot of experience with guys like Ryan John and those guys that play year in, year out. But yeah, it just made my plan before I go out to bat and try to stick to that as much as possible, do I go against it, and it should be okay. All right. Yeah, so we heard from the two Barbadians there. None of them, though, playing for Barbados. Price, Shamar Springer, Windward Islands, Volcanoes, and Romario Graves, CCC, not out on a 61. So uh, once again, the scores here. Com combined campuses and colleges, 204 in the first innings. Batting the second time, they are 270 for six. And uh, Windward Islands, Volcanoes, their only time at bat so far in this match, 395 all out. Combined campuses and colleges go into day four with a lead of 79 runs. Wide open game. This can be anyone's. We'll return on day four to see how this one ends. And that's it from me here at Chedwin Park. Back to you guys in the studio.
Yeah, I think I have to disagree with Gerard there slightly because I think, hey, the combined campuses and colleges are up against it. And I'd give Winwood Islands Volcanoes the advantage going into the final day and, and, and quite a healthy advantage in my opinion as well. Let's take a break and close out the show after this.